I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I've been going to tool auctions, garage sales, junk shops, antique shops, all kinds of places where you're going to find used tools. And I've also bought a lot of new tools, both for myself and for the companies that I work for. There's a few things that I've learned and I want to share my experience. Today we're going to talk about clamps. Now, I have a thing for clamps. I like them. They're very handy. They allow me to do a lot of prototype work, especially since most of the things I do, I only do once. So there's not really a need for making a huge fixture or something to make it repeatable. So clamps allow me to improvise. I have to understand the weaknesses of the clamps that I'm working with. By now, you're probably aware that I'm not in favor of things that claim to do everything but do nothing well. Clamps are a real classic example of that. This is a Bessie. It's called a duo clamp. And it's supposed to be a good one. Bessie is a good name. Well, the frame of the clamp is not very good. This plastic, even though it's fiber reinforced, has a tendency to break. So you have to remember that this is only for just doing a little bit of pulling. If you reef on that, you can snap this end plate right off. This is one of the better ones. This is an Advantech Workshop Quick Switch. It claims to be the same thing as a Bessie. But this one throws in an extra wrinkle. It lets you spread and clamp. The problem with this one's claim is this handle broke, so it doesn't do anything well. And even if the handle hadn't broken, the bottom of the clamp broke off. So this clamp is basically worthless. This one came from Harbor Freight and it's supposed to be able to do multiple things. You can take this screw out, pull that pin, and flip it around and put the end on here, put the pin back in it, and you have a spreader. Clever idea. It's an inexpensive clamp. I think I paid 10 bucks for this clamp. At the time, I wanted to do a specific task with this. I wanted to spread an aluminum window frame. We were trying to install bulletproof glass in the side windows of a Humvee. And the frames, when they got welded, pulled in just a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Enough to make it difficult to slide the glass in. So the operators were having to do quite a bit of an effort to try and pry and, and prod and pound that glass in. We ended up with some glass being damaged and that's not a good thing when the price of that glass is so high. I went out at lunchtime to the Harbor Freight store and I came back with this clamp and its friend. Handed them off to the guy running the job and I said put just enough tension on it to get the glass inside. Well, when you say limits like that they're open-ended. Just enough tension to get the glass in. If I can't get the glass in I'm going to put in all the tension that I can. One of these clamps is not like the other. You see the bolt in there? Well, the bolt in this one is because the pin that this lever arm works against snapped right off. Since I paid my own money for it, because I didn't want to have the company have to explain why we bought this clamp when it didn't work, I brought it home, took it apart, discovered that that pin had broke off, and replaced the bolt or replace the pin with this bolt. The clamps work. They're fine if you're making a glue joint and all you're doing is just holding two pieces of wood in position, but they don't have the strength for anything stronger than that. If you're buying a clamp like this one, you need to keep in mind what you're using it for. All you're intending to do is hold two pieces together while the glue sets and you're only going to put that much pressure on it. It's probably a good deal for you. It's going to work quite well. 
it goes on easily, holds the two parts together in place. You're probably not going to break that pin off. You do anything more than that, you're going to break it. If you buy one like this, it's made out of fiber reinforced plastic. It has a much stronger mechanism inside and metal components. So when you pull on this one, you're not going to break it. It's going to cost you two to three times as much as this one to buy this Irwin. But if you're doing a heavy duty job and you really got to pull on something hard, this is the one you want. This is a cute little clamp. It's called a spring clamp. And they do a fine job of holding things in position. You have to keep in mind the same thing that you do with the larger clamps and remember that it's only built for a certain thing. As you can see, this one doesn't have a lot of clamping pressure. And it also, because it's a cheap one, the hinge worked. Not from it being overloaded, you can only put on it what the spring puts into it. This one warped from being clamped to the rack. Once again, we compare this one to an Irwin. Now the Irwin is a spring clamp, but it uses a ratchet to put a preload on the frame, and the frame acts as a spring. It doesn't have a spring inside of it. But it's a nice little clamp, and you can exert a lot of pressure. I'm not going to clamp down on my finger with this thing as hard as I did with that spring clamp, because this will hurt. This one's made by Great Neck. Very similar to the Irwin, just a little bit larger, a bit more reach. And you can put as much pressure on it as you can put in with your grip. And if you double up, I can do about 90 pounds this way. That's a lot of pressure on something. If you have to put 90 pounds of pressure on a glue joint to hold it together while the glue sets, you got to redesign the joint. This is an old style. This is a spring clamp and it's a Stanley number 43-162P. It's from the 60s. Works quite well. Doesn't generate a lot of pressure. But this clamp should hold two boards together while the glue sets because that's really all you need. You just want to hold them together. If you're trying to crush them, once again, look at your joint design. Might be a problem. Now we get into the things that generate a fair amount of pressure. Because this has a screw on it, you can crank that in. And that half inch screw is going to generate way more pressure than what you would need for a glue joint. I don't have any idea exactly how much tonnage it's got, but it's more than enough to crush a piece of wood. The jaws leave a good mark in that board for around the shop fabrication. You can actually use this as a welding clamp, but it has some problems. This is an inexpensive one and it's one of the early ones. The design on it uses a cam and that cam forces against the piece of pipe and it has teeth on it so it engages the wall of the pipe and stops this jaw from sliding. But it can cam over and get to the point where you can't get it loose easily. It requires a pry bar to get the clamp loose. And they also can slip. They're hard to get to engage. This is an older clamp. 
The cam on it is cast steel and fairly sturdy. Once it engages, it stays engaged. This one is a knockoff. It has a stamped steel clamp on it. Casting is really loose. The thread is loose. Can't put anywhere near the pressure on this one just because it won't allow you to. Let's see, I think I got the old junker over here. But even the sturdier designs have problems. This is one that has the cam in it that's uh, cast steel. It's actually made up out of two clamps. The top part broke on one and the bottom broke on the other. Kind of tells you something about it. This part failed on one of these cheap sets and I took an extra jaw from one of the old ones and put it on here. The jaw on this one, as I tighten it up, it won't engage. It just slides. The only way I can get it to engage is to clamp down on that as tightly as I can and then I can get it to lock up. Once it starts locking, it'll pull itself in. But it doesn't want to stay. Now part of the problem is it's against a piece of galvanized pipe. Galvanized pipe isn't good for these. You want to use black iron. This is a Craftsman. It's not from the great days of Craftsman. You can see that it has the stamped steel latch on it. It's a knockoff of a Jorgensen. A bad knockoff. But it still holds fairly well. I used this one to assemble a barn and I was going a long ways past the strength needed to pull two pieces of wood together for glue. I was pulling siding into place on a barn that was so warped that I couldn't do it any other way. Worked quite well. I was able to attach this to a 20 foot long piece of pipe, stretch over the length of the, of the barn and pull the siding in place, then run up the ladder and put nails in. This is a Jorgensen. It's a good clamp. I have it on a piece of black iron pipe. I picked this one up at a garage sale. Jorgensen makes really good pipe clamps. The screw threads are well cut. The bodies fit on the pipe well. And this kind of locking device with the leaves, much better than anything like this one or this one. Even if you grip this one really tightly, just a little bit of pressure on that part of the handle and it pops those discs loose and it comes right apart. It engages quickly. And holds a lot of pressure. This is a good clamp. If you see one of these at a garage sale, most of the time they're fairly inexpensive because people don't think they're worth much mostly because they've been exposed to these all their life. Jorgensen stopped making clamps, at least they stopped selling them at Menards. I believe Jorgensen went out of business. Somebody's gonna have to check on that. It's unfortunate, but I think they were put out of business by these knockoffs. These are good enough. These are good. This is a knockoff of a Jorgensen. It has the discs and it has a rolled thread on the screw which means it's fairly good. Made in China. It has a limited lifetime warranty. Yeah, this one's from Harbor Freight. Heat treated cast iron construction. Well, you really want it made out of cast steel. But when they say cast iron, it's, sometimes it's a translation issue. Sometimes they're actually steel. Most of the time they're cast iron. 
Cast iron has a grain to it. It's not as strong as cast steel. It's not ductile. Jorgensen is cast steel. It'll bend before it breaks. You see this foot on the clamp? That's on there so that when you set it on a, a surface, it rides up and keeps the clamp from knocking itself loose. These clamps have a thing somewhat similar to it. Jorgensen's just a little bit more clearance. You don't rub your knuckles on the surface. Whereas this one, this ball actually rubs right on the surface. And sometimes if you put too much strain on it, you can't get the clamp loose. I got these for very little money. I have a pair of them. Uh, I'm not happy with them. I've had them for four years. I got one out of the bag and never bothered with the rest of them. If I really need to clamp on a large job, I'll use one of these, but I'll tighten it up just snug and then I'll use the actual pulling with it to clamp next to it. Now this one, this one's a Harbor Freight clamp too. Is it a good clamp? Yes, actually it is. This clamp is a good clamp. The one right next to it in the same rack, not a good clamp. Now why do I say that? When I buy these, and I bought several, I look at the position of the screw in that casting. Some of them come in at an angle, some of them are quite a dramatic angle. If it's at an angle, when you go to clamp it up, it pulls off to the side and twists the body of the clamp. If you're trying to clamp two pieces of wood together in a glue joint and, it's, and the clamp itself is pulling them out of position, it's not what you want to do. So I perform quality control before I do the buying, knowing full well that the company that makes these does not do that. This is a Pittsburgh same company that makes these. These actually work as long as I remember what they are, and what they do, and when I buy them, I look to make sure that it's a good clamp. The main reason I bought this clamp is I went to Harbor Freight to get another one of those magnetic strips. Because this works. It does exactly what they say it's going to do and performs the job very well. Plus the price is free because once again I use my discount coupon. This one came free. This one came 20% off. So when you add that together with the, the quality of the parts, it's an okay deal. It's not the best, but it's an okay deal. Because I only use these just for assembly of wooden pieces and the occasional light duty. So when you're looking to buy a clamp, don't buy one of these. This is Harbor Freight too. Not worth a whole lot. Never buy one of these. This is an Advantech Workshop Quick Switch. Came from Menards. Piece of junk. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.